know. Josh, you can Let me ask you guys that is going to be high on your list. Well, we, you know, we put our, our list together. Thanks. You, you always have a list. Right? It's, it's, we, 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 let me hear it click very clearly. So I, I want to try to be successful. But I also knew that there was a possibility that that wouldn't happen. And I, I owed it to the university and to our fan base to be proud. And so uh, he has been on the list from the first list we ever put together. Josh, how important is it to give your coaching staff the resources to recruit, not just in the Chicago area across the state, but nationally as well, to try to restore the program? It's critically important. It, it's, uh, the name of the game is there's two elements to building a successful program. The first part is bringing in the talent, and the second part is developing the talent. And so it would be negligent on our part to put all of our resources into the talent development part and not enough into the talent recruitment part. And so uh, Coach and I have, have talked at length about what's necessary in order for us to take those steps, really committed to getting a great staff in here and uh, making sure that they have the resources they need to do their work. Was that a main focus going into this coaching search? I, I think it's a main focus going into almost every coaching search, just to be sure that every time there's a change, there's an opportunity to take a step. And, and it doesn't matter what the reasons for that change were. The coach left, as it happened with, uh, with Kevin, uh, his volleyball program, or, uh, where the change is, is, is comes out of my office, uh, it's always an opportunity to get better. And so you, you spend some time self-evaluating, thinking about uh, what, what opportunities are there for us to take a strong step forward. And, uh, certainly that was a, a big part of our conversation. Josh, about your third bullet point, the patently false things, What was uh, was there anything that amused you the most that you heard rumor-wise during this process? <laughs> no, I, I really shouldn't dive into any of the and I, and I, you know, I wasn't out there reading the papers every day. I just, but, but people were coming back to me from our staff saying, you know, you want to believe what's out there now, and this is what's going to say. So, uh, needless to say, 95% of it was completely false. And, and it was, a lot of it was a little comical knowing, in knowing the full story myself. But uh, it, I think it's inevitable in, in today's world. Certainly people crave information. I, I love the passion of our fans. I love uh, how much people care about our program. And, and so that, that part of it is, I think, unavoidable in today's day and age. And what level of truth is there to the Jerry Colangelo recommending Monty Williams meme that we've heard? Yeah. I, I don't want to get into any specifics. I, I really think that would be inappropriate. Um, but I certainly have talked to Jerry and, and uh, have talked to many others as well. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's all part of the process that we went through. But I, I think the confidentiality of that process is important. Okay. Can you met you said with him on Sunday. Saturday. Or Saturday, sorry. Would you prepare right then to offer him, or did he wow you? Because it is unusual to do that without, you know, having a face to face first. Or it you it is. So uh, I, I was strongly expecting that that is how it would end, just because of the homework we had done in advance, the conversations that uh, we had had. Uh, and so we were prepared for that outcome, but we were also prepared for it not to happen. And so certainly uh, reserved the right to, to, to go a different direction once I got in the room with him. And if I felt differently, uh, we would have we gone a different way. Uh, so that morning I talked to him, made sure that I was comfortable. We talked it for a number of hours. Uh, and then I connected him with the Chancellor. I thought it was important that the Chancellor Jones had a chance to visit with him as well. So they talked by phone. Uh, and then I reconnected with Chancellor Jones. And uh, we were both comfortable and we extended the offer after that. What were the lingering, you know, what were you trying to pick up this instinct that you like from the face Well, I think all of us, you know, it's it's about relationships, as he said. It's, it's the same for me in wanting to have someone who I feel comfortable with, who I can work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I, I interact with the head basketball coach on, on, on a daily basis. And, and so it's important to me to have somebody who I trust, uh, who I respect, who I can support to the nth degree. And I think that's really important in my role. And, uh, and you can't know that until you actually have a chance to sit down with somebody across the table and, and talk about philosophy, talk about values, and, and get a, a better understanding of, of who somebody is. You talked about the waiver. Were you at all concerned with that would not go through? Um, you know, it all happened so quickly, I didn't have a lot of time to, to think about what happened if it didn't go through. I, I was very appreciative of the fact that it did. Uh, I think that uh, our, our staff at the university understands that I wouldn't have asked for that, except in the most unique circumstances. I can't imagine another situation other than a men's basketball or a football search where that would become necessary. Uh, 
Uh, and so I, I certainly don't intend to take advantage of that on a regular basis. But uh, we had a good conversation. I was able to outline my reasons. And, uh, thankfully, the university was supportive of it. Do you want to yourself in the last year? You've done a lot here in your first 13 months. It's been a whirlwind for you this whole time, and, and you probably weren't expecting to come in here and make all these moves, were you? Well, you, no, you, you, you hope not, uh, but you also realize that's the job. The, the job is to come in and, and lead the athletic program and make the decisions, no matter how difficult they might be. And uh, you can't you can't shy away from them when they present themselves. And uh, Loyalty is incredibly important to me. Uh, stability is incredibly important to me, and so we don't make these decisions in a hurry. We don't make them rashly. Um, but but when a decision is there to be made, we also can't hesitate and, and delay too long in making it. Otherwise, uh, we're doing we're doing too much damage to the program. Any update on the women's program? No, I don't. You said Brad was on your list from the get-go, but you didn't initially go after him. What was hold, what was the holdback? Well, I, I, as I said, I think the big concern was just is, is he somebody who's gettable? Uh, and you know, we we didn't uh, think that he would be at the at the outset, but uh, we eventually you know, realized that hey, we, we keep saying that, but we don't actually know. Why don't we Why don't we make a call and find out? And uh, sometimes you, you just never know what you're going to hear on the other end of the phone. And uh, Brett, his agent. Um, Surprised us all to, to let us know how passionate he had been about the Illinois job and uh, how he had identified that a long time ago as a place he would ultimately like to, to be. When you hear about Brad's passion for Illinois and how highly he spoke of the program and during his time in Macomb at Western, what does it say about the program in general that people still care there is national recognition behind the Fighting Line I brand? I think it says a lot. I, I think that people understand the, the brand uh, of Illinois basketball, and although we haven't had the competitive success that we've grown accustomed to for the last number of years, uh, it's still Illinois basketball, and, and there's still some nice banners hanging up there over on the wall, and we've got a great record of, of wins in, in the national tournament and within the Big Ten, Final Fours. I mean, you can go on down the list, we're one of the most decorated programs by almost any metric in the country and uh, people within the basketball world understand that and as Brad said he's a he's a historian of the game and, and so I was thrilled to learn that uh, you know from his time here he had, he had grown that strong affinity for, for our place. How much so, analytics do you know in in basketball and are you trying to get uh, sort of a little tutelage from uh, coach well, Underwood? I, I don't know a lot of analytics uh, but I, I'm certainly very happy that uh, that's a tool that he wants to use it's a, those are details that I don't need to necessarily dive into but uh, I'm thrilled that, uh, that that's a, an important resource for him, and I, I think it'll prove very beneficial for our program. Josh, you have to Josh, I'm, go ahead. You think, Jeremy, I'm going to turn the radio. Uh, what's the conversation with that? Because obviously you want you hire a coach to do that check. Yeah. But what's the conversations you've had? With who? With uh, Brad about Jamal. Yeah, it's – I do. I feel strongly about Jamal. Uh, I, I'm very grateful for the leadership that he's been providing our program during this interim phase and for the great work he's done on behalf of the program for the last five years. What I, I don't do as a matter of practice is mandate to any head coach who they have to put on their staff. I don't think it's fair. Uh, but I will recommend and I will suggest. And uh, he and I have certainly had extensive conversations about Jamal. And, uh, but ultimately, that, that decision will be with him.